Now, Lucy Letby has appointed Thank a new cheers. barrister in an attempt to overturn her convictions on the grounds the jury were exposed to unreliable evidence. Mark McDonald is gathering experts and said there was a strong case that the former nurse was innocent, warning that juries do get it wrong. Well, how often do they? Joining me is the criminal defence lawyer, Paul Britton. Paul, thanks for coming into the studio. This is a fascinating case because it seems like there's sort of a, a, a gathering head of steam of many people who are saying that the criminal justice system should look again at yes. this case. Yes, well, Tom, and, and looking at what you just said, how often do they get it wrong? Not very often. So what Lucy Letby's barrister is doing is going to the Criminal Case Review Commission. They get roughly 1,000 applications per year. It was set up in 1997. Since then, only 800 cases, roughly 30 a year, have gone to retrial, been sent back. And of those 30 a year, the statistic is roughly four are successful. So her chances aren't great. Mm. What her barrister, Mark McDonald, is doing is that he actually has a bit of a passion about miscarriages of justice. And in 2007, he set up a London clinic that looks at miscarriages of justice. It's been a passion from him since actually he qualified in 1997. Oh. He's been a criminal barrister ever since then. And he's been defending people who've been accused of all sorts of heinous things. I suppose m most of the time, they're, they're found guilty and that there isn't actually a, a miscarriage. Yeah, well, I mean, he'll, he'll only be able to represent in this scenario when they have been found guilty. What's mm. quite interesting is that he has two options. They can either look at the sentence, so he'll review the sentence and say that was wrong at the CCRC, or he'll say that the conviction is wrong. Well, they're going again for the conviction. Now, when you've got two parties, in this case, the Crown Prosecution Service mm. and Lucy Letsby's de defence team, both sides will rely on evidence. Mm. Both sides will have their own experts. And, of course, they're going to present the evidence that favours their case. What the jury must do is decide which evidence is more credible. Now, in the Crown Court, we have 12 jurors. And in Lucy Letby's case, 12 of them found that the Crown Prosecution's evidence was preferred, and that's why she was found guilty of the seven murders it... and six attempted murders. You're right to say that it was unanimous. It was a pretty overwhelming case presented to the jury. Um, and Lucy Letby, it's not like she was undefended. She had a leading KC, um, over a million pounds of taxpayers' money spent on her defence. And yet we now see a lot of people popping up on the television, in the newspapers, saying, oh, they didn't look at this, or what, what about the, the Texas sharp shooter um, analogy, or all of these different things. Um, is it likely that this leading KC who was trying to defend Lucy Letby wouldn't have considered... It's a, listen, that's a really things. interesting point, because from what we read, the leading KC is still on the case. Mm. It's the junior that's been dismissed and Mr McDonald has taken over the junior role, right. and we're told that the KC won't give any of the advocacy, will literally sit there in a sanitary position while Mr McDonald does all the advocacy. He so it's a lot to sit there. Well, so it's not his case. It's Mr McDonald's case that right. he's bringing on behalf of Lucy Letby. Mm. And that, that is interesting, because we do hear a lot of these different issues. The, the, the Guardian newspaper has run a story about the notes that Lucy Letby wrote, and, and, and this, this was quite a large part of the prosecution. She herself had written down, I am evil, I did this, in notes found in her uh, place of accommodation. She wrote down, I killed them on purpose, because I am not good enough, I am a horrible person. It played quite a big part in the prosecution of Lucy Letby. I mean, what uh, more do we need than that, but, really. But, but now um, the Guardian newspaper is saying these were notes that she um, wrote on advice of her counselling to get out her dark thoughts. Um, it, it seems strange that we're being told that now. Would that have come up in the trial? Or are people grasping at straws here? I think people are grasping at straws. And now the reason that we've got people coming out saying she might be innocent is because the, the cohort or the group of us that accept that she's guilty, we go quiet now because we've, we've had justice, we've had a result. So that only leaves the other side. And um, David Davis was on Good Morning Britain the other day and he said several doctors have written to him. Well, how many? You know, several is more than two, but, but, but less than a lot. So how many doctors have done that? If it's just two or three, that's not a lot. That's not unusual. No, but, I suppose when it comes to any sort of... There are always dissenting voices on any issue. I suppose perhaps the doctors that need to be listened to are the doctors who, who actually worked with Lucy Letby 
The, wit the witnesses. Yes. And Tom, this was a very short case. You know, cases in the Crown Court last six, seven, eight weeks. This was only a four-week trial. Is, is that not a point in Lucy Letby's favour? It is in if her... It, well, if it no. If rushed, if, it, if they might have missed something? No, it, it probably means that there is less or few independent documents, and it might be more witness-heavy, and the doctors would have given more witness evidence. Mm. Four weeks is a good time, really, because the jury don't get what we call jury fatigue. Right. You know, if it's eight weeks, 12 weeks... They sort of go blank. Well, it's, it's, it's Everything a, sounds the same, and, and it's... Yeah. It's a long time to listen to complex arguments, mm. but four weeks, you know, arguably, they should still be refreshed, and their decision should be safe. It is, of course, concerning when we hear that there might have been a miscarriage of justice. There's, there's been examples in the history of this country there where there have been very famous miscarriages of justice. The reason we stopped hanging people was because uh, someone was convicted um, uh, and it was found out far too late that they well, were... Well, when you're dead, <laughs> yeah. you can't change um, it. And, and, and so I suppose we, it, it's a careful conversation that needs to be had here because sometimes, sometimes courts do get it wrong. It's, it's right that it's looked at. The, the CCRC is a free service, mm. but it's free at the point of use. The barristers are, being, are going to be receiving legal aid funding, mm. so it's coming out of our pockets. How many times do you let someone have a go at it? So Crown Court failed, Lucy Letby, right? She mm. failed to defend herself. Court of Appeal lost. Mm. You know, if you want to take it again, should it not come out of your own pocket? Yeah, and well, I suppose, actually... There How long does the taxpayer of, want to keep funding there are, it? There are lots of people in these sort of communities online. There are um, lots of people in, in certain media outlets who are, who are part of the Lucy Letby is Innocent Brigade. I'd, I'd have thought they could crowdfund some money if they really wanted to. Yes. Is, that a, is that an option for that, them? That is an option, and lawyers, privately funded lawyers, mm. are often funded by crowdfunding, so it is an option available to her. Because I think a lot of people, a lot of taxpayers, will feel that it's, fairly, uh, it's a fairly bitter taste in the mouth particularly, perhaps, for the parents of the babies who were killed. Yes, so the, when, when the can they grieve? a million pounds of taxpayers' money yeah. has been spent on Lucy Letby. Yeah, I mean, I worked it out about half a million, but I'll, I'll take your million, whatever it I is. Might, I might be adding the whole it's, thing together. But it's an yeah. eye-watering amount of money, and you make a very good point there. These parents of these children, you know, when are they going to be able to grieve? When are they going to be able to not see it in the headlines anymore so that they can move on from it? I think, it's, I think that's a really important point. You know, justice doesn't just have to be done, it has to be seen to be done. But does that not apply to the victims as well? As someone in the legal profession, mm. when you see... We spoke to a statistician earlier on the programme who was saying, well, we shouldn't rely on statistics alone in these cases. Uh, we've seen politicians pop up and say things. There have been one or two doctors who don't seem to be particularly close to the case but have a view. When you see voices like that pop up, how does that make you feel as someone who spends their life within the legal system? It, does well, as a lawyer, undermine it? as a solicitor, I'm not supposed to feel anything. I'm supposed to think, <laughs> right? So I think when I hear that, you must be fully seized of all of the facts and the evidence. You can't cherry pick what you read in a newspaper or on a headline. Had they sat through the four weeks and seen it all, then and then they form a, a professional opinion rather than a personal opinion, I think it's compelling. But to, to read and pick up on snippets and then have an opinion where you say something as extreme as Lucy Letby might not be guilty in, in the softest terms, but if people say she's innocent, for me, I think that undermines our whole judicial system. You know, there is a separation... Uh, David Davis, for example, saying that she's probably innocent. There's a separation of powers for a reason. You know, MPs shouldn't be wading into these arguments publicly like that, particularly when, in this case, her own Lucy Letby's defence team are continuing the narrative. They're not letting it go. They're pushing it forward to the next stage. When is it going to stop? Mm. Well, Paul Britton, thank you so much for talking us through what is a fascinating case. Um, I'm afraid I don't think it's going to stop here at two, uh, uh, 48 minutes past two on Friday afternoon. But uh, we'll, we'll continue that case uh, as, of course, it advances. This is Good Afternoon Britain on GB News. After the break